Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite. Continuing Alan's route, we were just about to go into a flashback. Um, kind of in the middle of a scene, and then we went to a flashback, so I was like, good enough. Just because, with my luck, this will go like ten minutes. Of course, because I stopped it, it'll be like two seconds. Because that's always what happens, but whatever. It was when I was still Cupid. Lord Jupiter intended to take me back to Celestia, but Alan wouldn't let him and tried to strike him down. Since I still had my Cupid's arrow, Alan was reprimanded for trying to hold on to a divine artifact. Unless the gods were threatened, it was uncommon to face their wrath. Most misdeeds were overlooked, Jupiter being like, not letting you take my woman. Not your woman, Jupiter! Hands off! Not on this route, anyway. If a god was harmed in any way, there'd be nowhere to hide. All I do as a succubus is provide the best kind of pleasure. I haven't crossed any divine boundaries. And plus, you were a matchmaker at Cupid Corps. And the gods wouldn't mind that. I see. And that makes sense. Imagining being punished by Mom and Dad and Celestia made me sad. I was relieved to hear that the gods weren't angry with me. But gods and demons... I had avoided thinking about the dynamic between gods and demons for a hundred years. I just wanted to remain happy and ignorant. Yeah, well, ignorance is bliss. I had no regrets, but still, I knew that my choice had come with a sacrifice. I didn't want to think about what I had lost. Hmm, this sausage has so much flavor. I love the herbs in this seasoning. Eclaris, you say our habits are unusual. I mean, you're a pretty strange demon yourself. Oh, but you both enjoy it too, right? Is there a link between demons and herbs? Humans believe that herbs are supposed to help ward off evil. That's right. Rosemary is supposed to protect humans from demons. And yet it tastes so good. There was plenty of rosemary in our sausages. Clara seemed to love it, and I had no issue with it either. The thing is, it's like being a vampire would suck, because I like garlic. And what the fuck was that? <sighs> it was my phone making a... Okay, no, not important. Just a spam call. I... It's like... Ugh. Not that it matters, but sometimes I have to pay attention. Of course, like, it's fine here, but like... Listen, Florida. If there's anybody from Florida, I hope you're okay. Um, because by the time this goes up, it's been weeks since Milton pummeled the fuck out of you, but... It's, as I'm doing this, it's coming. Uh, so, and my mom. She's northern, like, a little further north than, like, Tampa, so she's not, like, but it's still, like, half the fucking state's in the path of this motherfucker, so. And then my sister got hit with Helene, so, you know. And meanwhile, H, and then all the way to, e like, we, it's, hurricane season just, it, it's not. We're already to M. Oh, Jesus. Like, my mom was not kidding when they said there was going to be a really bad hurricane season. Like, holy fuck. Jeez. Ugh. But, like, yeah. I mean, it's it's just kind of scary thinking about it. So, I don't know how the hell we lived so long. I lived in Florida for, like, 11 years. And, like, I'm sure there were hurricanes and stuff. But, like, I get, like... This is where people, like, you don't believe that, like, global warming is happening or, like, environmental changes are happening. Like, we've now, I think Milton's probably the second, but there was one a couple of years ago that it was like, you know, this would be a Cat 6 if we had those. Maybe you need to make one instead of just pretending that they don't exist. Like, the fact that, like, you have some that you're like, this is, f like, a fucking super hurricane like you're like uh super storm like i don't know we didn't have that problem like 20 fucking years ago you know what i mean <laughs> like you'd have like i mean i feel like tornadoes were always fucking devastating and bad no matter what level they are they're terrifying but like hurricanes did not like it was not like this i don't know you know of course like i was a child so like you don't realize you like it's a hurricane, and you know that that's kind of, like, not good, but it's still, like, a thunderstorm, and it's windy and stuff, but, like, you know, and we lived in Clearwater, so, like, hi, that, there might not be a Clearwater when this is, 
gone through. Like, you know, and it's just all the fact that, like, year after year, Flo like, Florida's going to sink for the fact that they keep building on it. And I don't think the state can hold that much shit. And the fact that, like, the, the ocean is not engulfing on either side. Like, I don't know. I don't know. But, like, it's just... I can't even imagine 20 years from now how fucking bad it's going to be. Like, remember when we used to get, like, Cat 5s and we thought those were bad? Fuck! <laughs> those are nothing compared to the super storms we get now. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of terrifying. If we live another 20 years, we might all die. Who knows? And we won't have to worry about it, but... Yeah, I just... So. So if you live in Florida, or you have family in Florida, I hope they're safe. You know? Because, like, the amount of people, like, on my work call this morning are, well, we're in Florida, and we're really dealing with power outages and stuff. It's like, did you not get your fucking ass out? And it's like, I mean, that's true. No. No. Some people do. And then some people are like, eh, it's fine. And then then you end up, like, neck deep in water, and you're like, oh, it was not fine. But, like... I want to be like Floridians are a special breed, but like New Englanders are the same. Where it's like anybody else would be like, you got two feet of fucking snow in October. You're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's fine. You're going to have like an ice apocalypse where like everyone's going to freeze it. And you're like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, we'll leave without power for like a week and it's all icy and freezing and we're all going to be like, whatever, we're fine. Like, You know what I mean? It's just certain areas, especially if you've lived in them for a long period of time. You're like, eh. you just think you can handle it until like something super mega comes through and you're like, you know what? Yeah, no, that was a bad idea. Jim Cantore is in the state of Florida. That's when you know, like, you're lucky the whole state's going to be there afterward. That man's a bad omen. Like, <laughs> I mean, he goes where the storms are coming, but it's still like, ooh, you know what's bad when he's in your state. Like, mm -mm, I don't know about that. But I would have left the whole damn state if he, you're like, he steps it. That poor man can't go on vacation, I bet. He goes on vacation anywhere, and they're like, oh, no, are we all going to die? He's like, I'm just I'm just on vacation, guys. And you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. Like, cause he's just... Anyway. But seriously, I hope everyone in Florida is so safe, and, like, you're fine, and everything. If you have family, friends, anything like that, I'm kind of going to be kind of scared to see what happens. Like, oof. Terrifying. Anyway. There's plenty of rosemary in our sausages. Clara seemed to love it, and I had no issue with it either. Oh, yeah. I was like, did I mention the thing? I was like, I was on the track of, like, if I were a vampire, it would suck because I love garlic. And then my phone rang because I was just wondering. I'm like, I just want to make sure it's not my mom. You know what I mean? Are some demons sensitive to herbs? Yeah, anything with purifying properties can hurt those lesser demons. We could plant herbs around our place. And that would keep those pesky demons away, especially peeping on our fucking windows. Hey, maybe I should try that too. Using plants to repel demons in hell. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Being a demon myself, the idea of planting herbs to keep other demons away felt strange. But the gods had their disputes and humans were at war all the time. It seemed that gods, demons, and humans weren't all that different. Speaking of herbs, how about an herb liqueur cocktail? Oh, I forgot you knew how to make cocktails, Alan. And <laughs> it sure brings back memories. Thanks. <clears throat> I can't do her voice right now because, like, if you can't tell, my voice is extremely hoarse right now. But I don't have time to take a break, guys. We've got a lot of shit to do. <laughs> like, I love one, too. It's been a while since I've had one of your cocktails, Alan. I got it. Alan grabbed the herb liqueur from Clarice's room, found a shaker in her kitchen, and began making us some cocktails. Plus, it seems like whatever path we're on, that voice, like right now in the two games we're playing, the ones that I'm recording, it's like the voices are this, it's like, I got to do the same voice. So I feel like that strains me more than like Guys, it'll be okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm getting slightly ahead. But what's going to happen is I'm going to get to Christmas and then I'm going to go back to barely being a week ahead, like maybe being a week ahead. And it's going to be like, <sighs> So I'm doing the best I can to bust out as much shit as possible so that we don't have to go back to every other day. But during Christmas time, we might do every other day just to give me a little bit of a buffer and stuff like that. Plus, like Christmas time, like the couple of weeks around Christmas, you know, you're spending time with your family, you're doing Christmassy things. So like, you know, 
you won't have as much stuff to have to catch up on if you're busy doing stuff and you can't be here every day. You know what I mean? Gives me a buffer for when I come back in January, you know? So I remember after we closed our pillow shop, Alan worked as a bartender in Lost York for a bit. We're getting a flashback to that. Cool. Oh, yeah. And look at I'm sorry. When you walk into like a biker bar and this is your fucking bartender, I would never not be in this bar. I think I'd move in. <laughs> like, how can I serve you next? I can prepare anything you like. Something sweet. Or perhaps spicy. Uh, nice game. Funny. Although, I mean, he's married, so that's disappointing. But with smooth lines like that, he charmed his way into people's hearts and attracted many female customers to the bar. I'd have been one of them. I'm not going to lie. But we knew it was a bad idea to stand out, so we quit bartending and we moved to Crunch Canyon to live a more quiet lifestyle. It's been a century since then. In those hundred years, so much had happened... It felt both like an eternity and a fleeting moment. I got to see the many sides of Alan during that time. He possessed both a gentle touch and a demonic harshness. He was multi-talented, having mastered a variety of odd jobs before our reunion. Aside from making cocktails, he was an excellent cook and carpenter. He could make anything with his hands. It was truly remarkable. With Clarice around, life and hell might just be entertaining. I had my worries about adapting to life here, but things seemed promising, especially because you're living in normal houses. Everything would work out. I entertained those thoughts as I enjoyed more beer and sausage. In hell, there's no day or night, so our celebration continued uninterrupted. Hmm, we can't drink anymore. Before I knew it, Clarice was tipsy. Just like old times, and now we're in our demon forms. I recall Clarice's drinking habits back in college. She used to drink excessively whenever she was rejected by the current target of her affections. All right, Clarice, time for bed. Miss Beasy, it take me there. Oh, come on. I helped Clarice up and brought her to bed. Afterwards, Alan and I stayed ti uh, started tidying up. Earlier, Clarice had mentioned that she set up her trash can to act as a por portal to a dumpster in the human realm. It was a clever use of demonic power. I finished cleaning up this side. How's it over there? Oh, I think it's fine. Oh, great. Let's head home then. Yeah, let's do that. Clarice, we'll see you later. Okay. While sprawled out on her bed, Clarice gave us a lazy wave. It was a scene I was quite familiar with. After returning home, I sat down on our bed. Phew, that was fun. Alan sat beside me, still in our demon form. Oh, sat beside me. Still in our demon forms, we looked at each other and smiled. Hmm, I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, it was so nice to see Claris and catch up. The beer and sausages were tasty, too. Yeah, and it's been a while since I had that much to drink. I think I'm feeling a little tipsy. Huh? He seemed fine earlier, but maybe it took some time for the alcohol to hit. Alan, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, but I want to be okay if I... Without waiting for my reply, Alan laid his head on my lap. Wow, it's unlike Alan to be so clingy. It seemed he was more drunk than he looked. He begged for a lap pillow and fawned on me. Pat his head, rub his back. Ooh, both of them are good. Both of them are good at, like, I don't know. Pat his head. Okay. <laughs> He's cute. I gently patted his head and his lips curled into a relaxed smile. It was rare to see him look so vulnerable. Hey, Spacey, do you like this place? Alan looked up at me with wide, glassy eyes. He had an innocent yet anxious expression. I smiled and stroked his hair with my fingers. Of course. Sweet, darling. That's reassuring. His eyes started to close and he smiled as he took my hand, pressing a kiss to my fingertip. Hmm, I really love you. He began to playfully nibble on my finger, but drifted off to sleep soon after. I'm not snoring for him, but you know. <laughs> it just doesn't sound good. He's asleep. Ella was sound asleep, taking slow, even breaths. 
It was unusual to see him like this. Perhaps reuniting with Clarice, who was somewhat a mother figure to him, provided some relief. This place was like a home for demons. Despite his initial hesitation, it must have been nice to return here. Hmm. -mm. Sneezy. Even in his sleep, he murmured my name, nuzzling closer. The gesture was so childlike, I couldn't help but smile. I wish you'd be like this more often. I didn't feel like sleeping just yet. I sat there admiring Alan's peaceful face. Snoring off again. Maybe it was the alcohol, but his face seemed a shade redder. As I stroked his cheek, he made a small face. Mm, Smeezy, don't go. Alan clung to my clothes as if he was afraid I would leave. <clears throat> I covered his hand with mine. I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. He may have been asleep, but it felt like he heard me. A contented smile graced his face, and he breathed more easily. Good night, Alan. I gently swept his hair to the side and nestled next to him, careful not to disturb his sleep. Alan must have bought a new mattress. Certainly smelled new. For some reason, that smell felt nostalgic to me. A kiss to cool the fire. The next day, I woke up to the sound of sizzling. Hmm. I opened my eyes in a haze and noticed Alan in the kitchen. Alan's making food. The scene flooded me with memories. It was almost as if we traveled back a century. Come to think of it, he'd often cook for me in this house. I remembered how I would always wake up to the smell of breakfast. Okay, so you know how, like, we're now we're living in hell, but, like, I thought it was odd when we were like, yes, yeah, Sylvie, you could come back any time. And then it was, like, 100 years later, and it's like, no, we've never seen him again. Like, he never came back. I'm sure it doesn't feel, like, we even said it doesn't feel like 100 years. You know what I mean? Because, like, demon time, and I'm sure God time. But it is kind of odd, and then it's like, he can't come visit us in hell. Right? So, like, hmm. I'm just curious about that, because it seemed like an odd thing. Come visit any time! And then never seen or heard from again. You know? He's gonna have to come back at some point, so that's... But, like, but we're in hell? So, like... Hmm. You like... Ellen shot me a quick glance while continuing to cook. It'd been some time since I last saw him with the frying pan. The sight warmed my heart, prompting me to rise. Yeah, good morning, Alan. Good morning, Spacey. Breakfast will be ready soon. Alan called out to me from the kitchen, a sound I hadn't heard in ages. Outside, the cityscape of Lost York was missing. Here in hell, there was no day or night. I missed the comforting glow of sunlight. Yet the familiar morning atmosphere warmed my heart. A new morning in hell had come. I decided to freshen up, hoping to relive the same morning from a century... The same mornings from a century ago. I stretched a little bit and climbed out of bed. Mmm, this is so good! Ellen's cooking was, as always, impeccable. On the table were fluffy croissants, creamy scrambled eggs, a fresh salad, and sizzling sausages. The coffee, aromatic and rich, reminded me of the beans we used to purchase. How did you manage to get all these ingredients? We'd only returned yesterday. The fridge shouldn't have been working, and we hadn't done any shopping. I wondered if there was a supermarket in hell, but Alan interrupted my thought. Well, I woke up early, so I went to the human realm to buy them. Really? I didn't notice at all. I was careful not to wake you. Oh, and sorry about yesterday. I hugged you and just fell asleep. I hope I wasn't a bother. It's okay. How do you feel? Any hangover? I'm good. What about you? Feeling okay? Yeah, felt nice to let loose after so long. And that's good to hear. Alan looked genuinely relieved. You've always had a high tolerance for alcohol. Maybe it's because I was a god. We chatted about this and that as we enjoyed our breakfast, then washed our dishes together afterwards. Once the chores were done, I gazed out the window and looked over Hell's landscape. Darkness reigned supreme, and I could see various demons flying with their wings. Hey, Alan, what's the plan for today? I thought about inviting him out for a walk as his eyes glanced toward the front door. Oh, about that. I was thinking of doing some gardening. Gardening? 
Yeah, while I was in the human realm, I bought some herb seedlings. Alan opened the front door, and I saw that there were numerous packages of seeds. And these herbs will ward off lesser demons, and we can also use them in our cooking. And there's plenty of land to use here. Since this is our new home, I want to make our view a bit more pleasant. Alan began planting the herbs in the, prep in the prepared soil. And there we go. You're going to have to use, like, demon magic because there's, like, not sun here, so. I thought that some plants wouldn't do well being planted so close to each other, so I asked Alan about it. Point to the right seedling, point to the left seedling. I don't think it freaking matters. One's probably the spicy choice, and that's the one that we want, so. The left seedling. Is this spot good for them? And that one's fine. And put this one here. I think that's enough spacing. <laughs> this one smells nice. Is it mint? Yep, yeah, and this one's rosemary, and that's lavender. Wow, I'm excited for when they're ready. Yeah, spicy. Because picking the left is spicy. Left is spicy. So if you're left-handed, you're a little spicier. <laughs> I, there's really no way. Like, it's just weird. Because it's like, sometimes, like, it's the right choice. It's the wrong choice. And this one, left is spicy. <laughs> So odd. Oh, I remember how much you loved mint tea. Oh, right. He's growing them to ward off demons. I was only thinking about eating them. I felt a little embarrassed for being such a glutton. So, so what's the leaf over there? What kind of herb is that? Oh, that's a bay laurel. You can try the leaves and add them to stews. Ah, I've always loved your stews. Can't wait to taste that. We chatted about the plants as we got them all on the ground. I didn't know bay laurels could grow in hell. Bay laurels were strongly associated with Greek mythology, so they were viewed as divine. Daphne tried to escape Apollo's courtship by turning herself into a laurel tree. Those laurels were considered sacred, even to Apollo. Does, we're, we're not going to have some kind of, like, gods got all pissed off because he brought, like, a bay laurel plant to hell and now they're mad about it. Like, because that seems really stupid. Please don't tell me that's what's going to I'm, like, waiting for the drama because, like, okay, she was being all lonely and he was being a sad sack. And we seem to have gotten over that. You know, I mean, he's still a little bit of a sad sack. Again, rightfully so. Like, I'm not too mad about it because, like, he's, like, afraid that you're going to be taken away. He's got a reason for that. You think after 120 years he'd get a little bit over it. But, okay, trauma, sure. You think he spent longer away well it's, he spent longer away from us than with us to be fair because we were cupid for 400 years so yeah i mean i can kind of understand like it's gonna take him a while you know to like feel secure enough and it's only like a mild thing they bring up a little bit here and there it's gotten better but like that one like hour plus long clump it was like oh dear god if you're both gonna be like fucking emo sad sex like this is gonna be fun this part's gonna this whole thing's gonna drag and be like ruined we seem to have gotten past that thank god she hasn't been like i'm lonely it's so lonely it's so lonely 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 boo fucking who i don't know why it bothered me so much but it did but like now okay we're making our life here but there's gonna be something else that's gonna have to happen because you know how the game goes like okay we're doing stuff we have a little bit of a you know romantic drama moment like oh we can't marry raul okay that's gonna be that but that's like yeah, that's a problem, but, like, let's forget about that because we got kidnapped by a man who wants to turn everyone into fucking lobsters. Oh, and Robin is a CIA agent who also has a YouTube channel, but that's just a front for the CIA to send coded messages. What? You know what I mean? Like, so where's the we're going to get kidnapped by a lobster man? I mean, he's dead now, so that's not going to happen, but I'm just like, what? What's going to happen? Is there going to be some other demons that we're going to, like, fight or something because of the... Like, or then they were like, laurels are like gods are like they're sacred to gods and it's like is apollo gonna come down here and like kick our ass or some shit the man doesn't even have a sprite i'm pretty sure he was in one of the other when in jupiter's like they you know but like you know what i mean like are they are we gonna like have a little bitch fight over a fucking bush like because that seems a little far-fetched but like i don't know i don't know what the drama's gonna be here anyway during ancient times, crowns made of laurels were a symbol of achievement. In modern times, demon used laurel, demons used laurels for stews. 
Okay. Or I guess that was just a little history lesson. Like, gods wear them on their head and demons eat them. Okay. I feel like Alan's the only one that... Well, I mean, like... No, it's a bay leaf. Bay leaves are the ones that you usually put in, like, a stew or whatever, and then you take the leaf out. Not a laurel. I mean, maybe other people do laurels, but I know, like, I've seen, like, in certain stews and stuff, it's like, what the hell is that? You have a... You just throw the leaf in there, and you let, and then you take it out when you're done. It's a bay leaf. That's what it is. It's been a hundred years since my transformation, but the line between gods and demons often seemed thin. Phew. That should do it. With these protective herbs, lesser demons won't come near. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. It's probably because you've become a greater demon. A greater demon? I still didn't... It still didn't feel real to me. I thought I'd feel different after becoming a greater demon, but nothing seemed to have changed. Well, it's also, too, because she was a lesser demon, but they never mentioned before... Like, right, her having any... Oh, since I turned into a demon, I have a problem with, like, herbs and shit. She never seemed to have a problem with herbs. So, like, is it because of her divine nature? Like, so she... Even though she's a demon, she's still different than other demons, I guess. But if I'm a greater demon, then that means I should be able to do more things like Alan. Yet, watching Alan work, I realized how different we were. His every move was graceful. Alan always had a knack for things, but... Well, yeah, again, like, you might not have the skills he has, but also, he's been a demon for, like, way longer. Even in heaven, he was precise and diligent. He was always good at lining things up accurately. He was always so earnest and took his job seriously, too. That's why he was able to take on any job that came to him. I wonder if I can be more like him someday. Oh, I've been a demon for a century. I was an angel first, then Cupid. I've been around Alan longer, but I lacked his confidence. But now that I'm in hell, I could go and ask advice from Clarice. As we worked together in the garden, I was reminded of the time I lived as a human. A human chi as a human child, I always felt someone's presence when I played outside. A dark wing shielded me from harm. I didn't know it back then, but it was Alan, the love of my life, watching over me. Hey, Alan? Hmm? Thank you. Now let's get into you. Just happy thinking of everything we do together and how you always care. So, thank you, Alan. Spacey. Still kneeling in the dirt, we shared a kiss beneath the laurels. Being this close to him filled me with happiness. He gave a slight squinted smile and caressed my face. Oh. Alan looked surprised. Sorry, I forgot my hands were dirty. Same here. We'd been gardening before we touched each other's faces and kissed. Now we both had dirt on our faces. Now it's time to get in a sexy shower. We looked at each other and burst out laughing simultaneously. <laughs> so lame. Wait, let me grab a towel. No, hold on. We're almost done working. How about we take a bath together after this? Huh. Hmm? Alan looked taken aback. I didn't think my suggestion was that shocking. His reaction made me wonder if I'd said something inappropriate. This place has a bathtub. I just thought it would be nice. Can we? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's just been so long since we talked about this. I guess it has been. Over the past ten years, we've been constantly on the move without a fixed home. Most places only had showers. Finding a place with a, bath with a bathtub was rare. I think decades had passed since we last bathed together. You can't shower together? All right, then. Let's take a bath. Okay, I'll get the water ready. Thanks. I'll wrap things up here. I filled the tub with hot water and added bubbles. We hadn't enjoyed a bubble bath together in years. Hmm. Spacey. Holding each other, we shared multiple kisses, enjoying the bath. Oh, we're getting all frisky now. It's been a while since we've done this. The feeling of bubbles bursting and warm water on my skin was so comforting. We used to do this often. When we tried living like humans, we'd stay in the bath until the water turned cold. The warm water improved my circulation. I hadn't felt so human in a while. As we kissed, I held him tighter. His wet skin felt enticing. Even though I thought I was used to this, I blushed. This reminded me of a past moment. Alan looked so different with wet hair. I glanced away, but he lifted my chin and pulled me close. 
You really never change. Our lips met again. His arms wrapped around my waist, making me catch my breath. Spacey, come here. I'll infuse you with demonic powers. <laughs> I, I, sorry. I just really love, because, like, you know that means they're going to fuck, but it's just so funny. I'll infuse you with demonic power. Like, could you just imagine if someone said that line to you, you'd be like, the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Unless it's, like, your boyfriend or something, you'd be like, you're ridiculous, but, you know. But it's just it's so fucking corny, and it's so funny. Oh, I love it. Alan, but... Hmm? I'm a greater demon now. Should we still do this? Girl, you shut your mouth and let this man take you. Clarissa told me just yesterday that I was now a greater demon. I was unsure if I still needed his powers. Alan just laughed. I think you don't need more power now that you're a greater demon. I mean, I'm grateful, but... For over a century, he'd given me much of his powers. And the thing is, is like... You're also sharing it and like... It's not just about like, I'm giving you power. It's like an intimate moment. Like, hi, girl. I don't need to have sex with you anymore. We've been married for 120 years. Sex is done. Like, what the fuck? Demons can't increase their numbers naturally. That made this act somewhat redundant. Okay. I'm gonna fucking throw my controller now. Well, we can't have a baby, so there's no point in having sex. Fuck you. Seriously? Who the fuck wrote Alan's route? I just want to have a conversation and slap you in the face. Because we had to go... You have to keep bringing babies into this bullshit. And I hate that so fucking much. It really makes me mad. I hate it. Do not fucking force babies on me. God, I hate nothing more than that in games. And then you had to make them be whiny little sad sacks for so long. Like... That it was just like, this is dragging the whole thing down. And like, why are we whining about being lonely and lonely and lonely? And I want to be lonely. And it's like, great, why? So she can have a baby? Jesus fucking Christ. And now we're back to this. In every other fucking route, it's a, oh, okay, we're fooling around, whatever. And now in this one, it's like, well, there's no point in having sex because it's not like I can get pregnant. Fuck you. Who wrote this? Why did you make her such an unlikable fucking character? Suddenly, out of nowhere. Because in every other one, she has never once been a whiny little sad sack who's been, I'm lonely, and oh my god, we can... What's the point of having sex if we're not gonna have kids? Uh, as someone who's on the ace spectrum, you know, sex can be fun when you're with someone that you love. You know? And in these games... Uh, you're in love with Alan, so it should be fun for you. You know? So if you're not... Why? Why? Like, what the fuck? Unless they're gonna be like, she's totally ace and has no desire to have sex, which we clearly know is not true. Why are you doing this? Why are you writing her like, uh, eh, there's no point because we're not gonna have a bait. Like, now that the only thing in her fucking head somehow is in the back of her mind, like, baby hints... She's not saying it outright, but that's exactly what the fucking thing, what this basically just said. We can't increase our number, so there's no point. Oh my fucking god. Don't ruin this whole fucking game for me. Ah. We were finally getting to a point where I wasn't, like, annoyed with Alan's route. Because I was like, okay, we're past the sad sack bullshit. And now we're gonna bring up the baby bullshit again. And it's like, ugh. You know... I don't blame Alan, I blame whoever the fuck was in charge of writing his route and decided to make it, like, just the most annoying thing ever. Huh. Wait, redundant? Yeah, see, now she's gonna be like, oh, I'm on the baby train again. I fucking hate this so much. The moment I had that realization, I felt my heart sting. Ugh, God, I hate this. This wasn't about necessity. It was a way for lovers to show affection, but this act no longer had a purpose. What if it felt empty? I no longer had a need for power, and this act would never create a new life. I remember how Alan wished for me to experience the happiness of a human. Oh, Jesus Christ. I hate this so much. I really just, I hate the person who wrote this fucking route. I really do. There were some things human could, humans could have that neither gods or demons could. It would always be beyond our reach, and you never cared in any other motherfucking route until now, and it's so annoying. 
Hey, don't make that face. Alan touched his forehead to mine, smiling gently, a trace of sorrow in his eyes. He understood my thoughts. I just want to be close to you, that's all. Isn't that reason good enough? His gentle smile blurred my vision with tears. Also, now I feel bad for Alan because you're like, eh, there's no point in having, like, kind of a cunt are you? Like, again, unless you're, like, totally ace, then that's totally fine, or on the ace spectrum, then yeah, okay. You might not want to be frisky as often, but she's not. So her whole, like, eh, there's no point in having sex with my husband because I can't get pregnant is like, um, maybe because it's supposed to be fun and you love each other, and now you're just making her an, a completely unlikable character, and I kind of want her to die so Alan can move on and find someone better who's not going to be a douche, but she's being a douche. And, like, I don't think I've ever disliked her character before. I mean, I think we've had moments where it's like, don't be all embarrassed and shy and awkward. You've been married. Like this, oh, my God, I'm embarrassed and shy. And we're going to get, like, she's never been like that. I think maybe, maybe once or twice, like, little moments where you're like, Why? But we usually get past it, if anything. But, like, now you're just going to act like this? Ugh. They're really making Alan's route unlikable for me. And I just, I don't want to be here right now. I try so hard every time we open one of these. And I'm like, we're going to, it's going to be fine. We're doing okay. We're having fun now. And then it's like, then they bring it back around to one of these freaking, like, things that I just can't stand. It's either her whining about being lonely or whining because she can't have a fucking baby. And it's like, you know what? You never cared in any other one. Why did you have to do this? Oh. It's a personal problem. Because I just, I hate children. I don't like children. Like, I don't mind they're a sassy lost kid. Go ahead and adopt a sassy lost kid. That's fine. We can have our little found family like that. That's adorable. And I don't mind that. But this whole, like, I need a baby. I can't be a, I'm not me without a baby. Like, you're not... A baby doesn't make you a whole person, okay? Like, it's okay if you want to have kids and you like kids, but, like, I don't know why they need to put these things in. It's like, I know some people like it. Oh, I love seeing them. I hate it. I hate it so much. I do. It's a. Per it's definitely me. It's a me thing, but I hate it, and I can't get past it. Like, I really can't. It's like the 18-year-old character with the 40-year-old man. Oh, I hate that so much. Oh, and I hate when they bring babies into shit. They really don't do it often. But, like, I also know, like, people like fan art will do it. Like, oh, look, this is, like, this character with their child. And it's like, no, don't ruin that character for me by doing that. I usually just don't engage with things like that. But I'll see it and be like, no, why would you ruin it? I don't say it out loud to those people. Because, like, that's your fantasy. That's your headcanon. Go for it. Live your best mom life. Whatever. You know what I mean? But I'm over here like, no, stop. Like, I'm mad that I had to see that. <laughs> I'm not mad that I had to see it, but I'm like, no, it's disappointing to me. I don't like that. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God. So I just don't want it to be forced on me in a game. And like, oh, I hate that she keeps harping on it. Cause like, this is just gonna be like, I mean, either it's going to be something she gets past and she's like, I'm totally happy the way I am. Good. But we're going to have an annoying fucking ride to get there. Or then we're going to have a find somehow find a way to fucking steal a baby or some shit. And then I'm like forced to. And now it ruins the route. It's going to be like, no, I hate this now. I hate it. It's like a bad end. So. Mm, kind of wishing we had done this before Raul. Really do. Because, you know, then I would have had something to look forward to. And now right now I feel like I have nothing to look forward to. But this game fucking ending now. Which is sad, because we had a great time with it, most of it, but this is ruining it for me. It really is souring the whole fucking thing, which is, you know, it's like you had a great meal, but then the last thing you eat is just, like, rotten, and you're like, ah, It just puts a damper on the whole thing. That's how this is going, and I'm I'm trying very hard, but it's not working, guys, and I'm sorry, but, ugh, I hate it. Ah, uh, his gentle smile blurred my vision with tears. Yes. It is good enough. Better be. I'll shut your fucking mouth and stop bitching about babies. I placed my arms around his neck, holding him close. We're going to have like an hour or so where it's going to be okay. And then another hour. And then they're going to come right back around to this bullshit. Of course it's good enough. Even humans don't need a reason to do this with their lover. Yeah. It was an act of pleasure. Humans overlook the biological purpose and would simply indulge. It was an act that went against one's very existence. Yet no one doubted it. 
I I think we could have dealt without that judgy bullshit. It's an act that went against one's very existence. Sex goes against your very existence? Excuse me? What? What kind of fuck? Like, I again, on the A spectrum, could care less if anyone ever touches me. Please don't, for the most part. But it's very prudish to put that in. I, okay, all right, moving on. But I just, I don't like the person who wrote Alan's route. I really don't. I don't think you should have let them. Because they're forcing baby views and their whiny, sad, little, lonely, emo bullshit. And then they're having sex goes against one's biological purpose kind of bullshit. Get the fuck out of here with this shit. What even? I don't... Maybe I'm misunderstanding the point because I'm just mad about the whole baby thing. I don't know, but that just rubs me the wrong way. It was silly of me to have doubts. There was no need to overthink. Alan, I want you to. Yeah. Let's be together. We shared many kisses, our connection deepening with each one as we found ourselves addicted to each other's bodies. Stupid fucking phone. Oh, fuck off. Jesus. We hope that happiness awaited us, that our actions had meanings. Meaning, sorry. Alan, I'm so happy right now. Could stay that way and stop being a sad sack. Yeah, uh, me too. Like bath bombs dissolving in water, our bodies melted together. We intertwined until nothing separated us. Now that's a good line. Still not forgiving whoever wrote this, but I'll give you one for that one. Yet we couldn't truly become one. That's why we sought reassurance in each other's presence. I mean, no one can truly become one, because that would be weird and against science and physics and nature. We touched, feeling the warmth, letting the other know we were there. I didn't want to believe that this act had no meaning. Then stop saying it and bringing it up and being a judgy bitch. After the bath, I lay in bed, feeling dizzy from the prolonged heat. Ugh, I feel dizzy. Sorry, I think I set the water temperature too high. But it wasn't just the water's heat that did this. Here, drink some water. Thanks. I sat up and sipped the water Alan handed me. It made me feel a bit better. To be fair, I feel a little dizzy today, too, which is just odd. Drinking water, sleeping, eating, these comforts were constants. These, uh, this part of me remained unchanged. Also, uh, why aren't you bitching and whining that you... Well, you're... Okay. All right. We have this whole entire... I refuse to believe that sex has no meaning. Eating for you has no meaning. You don't need to eat. So why aren't you bringing that up? Why aren't you being a judgy bitch about the fact that, like, there's no need for you to eat? You're still indulging in that, and it literally serves no purpose for demons. You don't need to eat human food, but you do. So, like, why are we having our judgy little round about, like, well, having sex is no meaning because we can't have kids? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what kind of, like, weird fucking prudish judgy bullshit that is? When, like, you don't need to do any of the other things that, quote-unquote, humans do, but you're doing them anyway. But you're not judging that. So, like, the fuck? You know? Not having fun here. Uh, my human sensations remain, perhaps because Alan wished for me to experience human joy. Though a demon now, I was once a god. I was raised like a human, yet what healed me the most were demonic powers— Receiving so much power from Alan left me warm. I hesitated, wondering if it was okay to accept so much. Alan wishes to share his demonic power with me. I set the cup beside the bed and gently tugged Alan's hand as he sat next to me. Hmm? What's the matter? Um, Alan, is it okay that I always take from you? You let me feed on your dreams. That's true, but... Now that I'm a greater demon, shouldn't I give you some of my power? You think I thought the whole point with sex was like a sharing of power, so. Huh? Hmm? I just find it bold of you to suggest that. Is it? I'm not familiar with these demon customs. It's been 120 years, I feel like you should be, but I get it, it's for us. Actually, how do I give you my demonic powers in the first place? On reflection, I realize I should know how to share my power with him. Yeah. I looked straight into Alan's eyes, awaiting his explanation. He blushed and looked away. 
Oh, right. I haven't shown you yet. But, no, it's okay. I don't need anything. But if something happens to you, I should know how to transfer power. Please teach me. Again, like... Isn't, wasn't, isn't the whole sex thing transferring power? So, like, you would be able to do the... Like, I don't get that, but okay. How do I explain this? Do you have to peg him? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be some weird kinky thing my power is transmitted through bodily fluids you know the human tales of vampires and those stories origi originated from a demon who extracted power through blood so you can either transfer it through blood or something else it doesn't matter so again we're transfer if we're sharing bodily fluids by having sex and kissing he's also sharing my power when we do that Something else? He mentioned that any bodily fluid could be used as a medium, and when he transferred power to me, he wasn't using my blood, so... Okay, we do not need to get this graphic. Huh. Hold on. Does that mean... Covering my mouth with my hand, I gasped in realization. Again, like, I feel like she shouldn't be this stunned about it. She's be like, okay. All right. So let me kiss. I can transfer my power to you? Well, yeah. But to be honest... Either you intend to share your power, or I just wish to draw it out, and that can initiate the transfer of demonic energy at any moment. Yeah, okay. So we just aren't being, like, intending to share a power, we're just taking it, not realizing that, okay, we gotta just go open our mind to it. Because I'm like, we're sharing bodily fluids every time we have sex or kiss, so... However, even if a lesser demon bites me, they can't extract my power. Your intent is the key. I'll let you know when I need it, so you don't need to ponder about it for now. Okay, so it's like, so if he didn't, in, if he doesn't intend to give us power, we can just have sex for no reason, and it's like, it's not a power transfer, it's the intention behind it. So, okay, I mean, all right, cool, there you've explained it, so you don't have to feel guilty, you can just have sex with your husband for freebies. I see, so it's that easy to transfer power. I feel like we're learning this because we're gonna need to know it for some reason later. It suddenly dawned on me why a demon's kiss was considered to be so special. Kissing and acts of intimacy were also methods of exchanging power. I felt like it gave those acts a purpose after all. Oh, dear God. Alan, can we try it out? Huh? Try out what? This. Oh! I pushed Alan back onto the bed, positioning myself on top of him. Spacey! Let's practice. I want to try giving you power. Hold on. I believe I have enough as it is. But I took a lot earlier, so I want to give a little back. You really don't need to, especially in your condition. Alan's cheeks turned a deep shade of red and his eyes darted around. Seeing him this way, a mischievous urge welled up within me. I wanted to toy with him. Is this how it felt to be a demon? Now stay still. What does he mean by my condition? Leaning forward, I gently cupped his face and intended to transfer my power as our lips met. I'm not moaning. Wow, so this is how it feels. I wanted to give. We kissed and I focused on that desire, making the sensation feel slightly different from usual. I couldn't put it into words, but something seemed to be leaving my body, cooling the intense warmth I had felt before. Whenever I received power, I felt a hot sensation... Now I realize that giving it away had the opposite effect. How was it? Did I do it right? Yeah, I think you did. <laughs> then one more time! Wait, I just... I placed my hand on his chest and kissed him once more. This truly was an extraordinary experience. So this is what a demon's kiss is like. I've never experienced anything like it before. Okay, well, I mean, yes, you have. But I guess what she means is like the giving the demon's kiss. So yeah, okay, fair. As we kissed, I wrapped my tongue around his, focusing on transferring my powers to him. Doing this for the first time was thrilling, and I began to lose control. Alan suddenly grabbed me by the shoulders. That's enough of that. He pulled me away, rising to his feet. His face flashed, uh, flushed a bright red. You sure? I was thinking of giving some back since you always give me so much. No, you've already given too much back. He rested the back of his hand against his cheek, looking away, seeming seemingly trying to cool down his heated face. 
We had kissed and shared so much more countless times already. What was there to be embarrassed about? Um, does Hal have customs against doing something like this? Not exactly. I mean, it's the first time I've ever received powers this way. Oh, really? I wouldn't receive powers from other demons. Oh, right. Sorry, I... Th I thought I knew this already. Alan was an incubus. He was a demon who ate dreams. And he performed these acts only in dreams. He told me I was the first person he'd slept with in real life. That's why it was really the first time he received energy in this manner. Something about that made me happy. I had another first with him. We'd been together for so long, yet there were still things we experienced for the first time. I mean, that's kind of cute, to be fair. Alan, I love you. See, like, and then we have moments like this where it's like, okay, we're getting back on track and we're not having this weird baby melodrama crap. Don't bring the baby melodrama in here and I won't get pissed off and I won't hate this fucking route. Because when we're having moments like this, it's like, okay, it's cute. Okay, we're, we're back on track. I'm having fun again. But then they always have to fucking drag me down. Like, why is this one like a ride and it's a bad ride? You're like, yeah, oh, fuck, here we go. It's like a roller coaster that goes up and you're like, yeah and you're hitting the crescendo and you're like, yeah, we're about to go plummeting down and then it flatlines and you're like, oh. Oh, because they're talking about baby melodrama crap and then you're like, oh, we're going up another hill. Oh, 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 this will be a really big fun drop. Wee! And then it's like, well, oh, never mind. It's the fucking baby melodrama again. You know what I mean? I wish they'd stop fucking doing that. You know? Just, just fucking stop. Fucking stop. Stop setting my expectations. Like, we're having a good time and then it's flatlining with this bullshit. You know? That's all I'm saying. Because now we're back to, like, having cute moments, and it's okay. And we're like, okay, I'm back into it. They're gonna just fucking drag me down again. You're so... He buried his face into my shoulder and sighed, fatigue evident in his voice. It's kind of cute that he's embarrassed about getting power like this for the first time. Alan appeared exhausted from being led around by the nose. I couldn't resist and gently ran my hand over his head. <laughs> You're so cute. Hey... As if in playful retaliation, Alan began to mess my hair. We hugged and playfully rolled around in bed together. <laughs> you really make me so happy. His gentle hands caressed my shoulders, cheek, and neck. We closed our eyes and kissed. This time the kiss was free from any transfer of powers. We gave, we received, we completed each other. The sweet yet depraved act held a deep sense of dedication. I also just don't like how they're calling kissing depraved. I know we're demons, but like, why do you have to make, why do you have to word everything like that? That also kind of takes me out. Like, yeah, I don't, that's uncomfortable. It's like they made some like Jesus freak fucking be like, they're like, oh, they're like, like write this about D and then like, oh, depraved act demons kissing. And it's like, what kind of weird fucking religious freak are you that you're like, everything is depraved and like, sex for fun is just wrong like i i just feel like there's a lot of judginess going on with the way they're wording things and i just what is her fucking problem she's never like she fucked raul in the first game like just had casual sex and she wasn't calling it depraved she wasn't oh he's a whore because he was out there just fooling around and having casual sex but like making out with your husband is depraved I just don't understand who wrote this. What's wrong with you? Who hurt you? And don't, please don't write any more Atome games. Because, like, I don't think you can handle it. Like, I don't know. Like, you need help. You're ruining it. We held hands and our foreheads touched. A tender gesture was all that lingered. Like, it, these moments are cute and then you're like, this depraved act. Excuse me? They're just full, they're just kissing. It's not even like they're having sex this time. Like, I just... I don't get who wrote this. Packed with the devil. Interesting. The little mermaid fell in love with a human prince, but mermaids and humans lived in completely different worlds with different lifespans and souls. When mermaids died, they turned into sea foam, but humans have souls. It was said they went to the underworld when they died. Even in death, they'd be torn apart to different worlds. That was why the little mermaid chose to pay the price in order to become human. She offered something precious to the sea witch and threw away her mermaid lifespan of 300 years to become a short-lived human. A few days later, interesting, 
little aside. I mean, it go ties back to the movie we watched with Sylvie, but I'm curious how that's going to tie in. We were invited by Clarice to her home, and were suddenly handed a mask for the masquerade party. Ta-da! Isn't this cute? I got this because I thought you'd look good in it. Can you try it on for size? It is cute, but what's it for? It's for the masquerade party, of course. Uh, you're holding a masquerade party here in hell. I am. Today's the Sabbath. That's why we have the masquerade party. I didn't know you were supposed to have a masquerade on the Sabbath. Actually, by Sabbath, do you mean the gathering of demons? Yes, just so you know it's different from the one from a century ago. This one's more peaceful. What does a peaceful Sabbath even mean? They don't sacrifice babies, maybe? The Sabbath I'd seen before was an event where demons ate people. I couldn't imagine it being peaceful. I mean, you could still kind of eat people, but in like the sexy, dirty way and not like the like cannibalistic way is all I'm saying. That's a way more peaceful way to do <laughs> That won't happen in this one because whoever wrote it has got some serious hang-ups about sex. I don't know. Yet we keep banging our husband, but then we have to have these guilt moments and then we talk about it being depraved. So I don't, don't really know what end is up with whoever wrote this. Yep, I knew that design would suit you. Now let's keep this one. Clara snapped her fingers and the mask I was holding suddenly vanished. She mentioned she'd take it, so I assumed it was stored somewhere. However, I had no way of knowing where. There were so many things greater demons could do that I didn't understand. Anyway, I'll conduct the hell tour today. I'll show you all the best places. Thanks, but Clara's, can I ask you something? Hmm? When is it? Ask away. What's that fluffy thing? There was a mysterious fluffy creature on Clarice's shoulder. It's a pygmy puff. <laughs> no, it's a little one-eyed demon. He's round and fat and adorable. The little le lesser demons that, even though they eat people, are kind of cute. The fluffy creature occasionally flew and bounced, st stirring my curiosity. It's a burb. It's a hell burb. No, that's my familiar spirit. Squeak! Hey, it made a sound. Wait, your familiar spirit. And didn't you say you don't like to force others to obey you? I did, but after seeing you two together, I felt a longing for company. So I summoned him using a demon's pact. Squeak! A demon's pact? Huh? Alan, you never taught her the basics? Nope. It wasn't needed. She evolved into a greater demon by absorbing my powers. There was no reason to teach her forbidden arts. Yeah, yeah, you two sure are lovebirds. But remember, we're in hell. It's funny that there's forbidden acts in hell. Like, summoning demons. It might have been unnecessary if you were still living in the human realm. But now that you're here, she'll have to learn eventually. You should teach her properly before others deceive her with lies. Fine, then. Uh... I looked at Clarice, unable to follow the conversation. She just smiled and continued to talk. Demons can lure human souls with a pact. That's how I called upon a soul from a guy I dated in the human realm and made him my familiar. <laughs> That's fucked up. What? You just brought his soul here? And he was once human? Absolutely. He's my familiar spirit, after all. Is that really okay? A demon's pact requires consent from both parties. He must have agreed to join her or he wouldn't be here. Squeak! Clarice's familiar joyfully circled around her. It was clear he held affection for Clarice. I mean... Okay. <laughs> Settle down, RB! Squeak, squeak! His name is RB? Yes, it's short for Robin Bread. Doesn't it remind you of a nursery rhyme? Did, is this Robin? Did she turn Rob? Is this because she named him Robin Bread? But like, did she? Well, no, she couldn't have because Robin would have died a long time ago. But like, oh, my God, that would be that would have been. I feel like it's just a throwback to be like, remember when Clarice and Robin were adorable and dating and together? Like, yeah, but like, unless she can, he's long dead and she can somehow get his soul. You know what I mean? But. The poem, Who Killed Cock Robin, came to mind. <laughs> Was Clarice inspired by that rhyme? What an odd choice for a name. Not CR, but 
RB. Where did bread come from? Has Clarus always had an affinity for pastries? Um, I'll teach you more about the Demon's Pact later. S sure. Yeah, let's proceed with the Hell Tour. Coming right up. And we'll do the Hell Tour in the next part. And let's hope we have a, an hour where we don't get inundated with stupid baby bullshit that pisses me off. Because, like, then we have moments like this where we're like, it says Sabbath and flames in the background. Uh, you know what I mean? Because we're having a good time now. We're back to having fun. Like, let's keep this momentum and stop dragging it down and pissing me off. Because, like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like... She's just getting a little too, like, you've been a de- Like, I get it, it's hard to be like, like, she was a god, and she was a human, and now she's a demon, and it gets a little confusing in your head, and you're like, well, this, and then, and you got a lot of things you're comparing to. I get that. But she gets very, like, in this, like, very judgy about things, that when she was a god, and doing these things, she wasn't being judgy about like the sex and all that stuff. And there's like very, like the terminology they're using sometimes, like depraved acts. And like, it's not the first time they've said it before either. And it's like, why in this one are you acting like the things that you were doing when you were living like a human? Why are they depraved now, but then they were totally cool and whatevs. And now it's like sex has no purpose because we can't make babies. But like, when you, like, what religious person? It seriously sounds like some religious fanatic wrote this. Like some of the, you, sex is only between a husband and wife to procreate. It should not be for fun. And making out is like a depraved act. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why am I getting this weird judgy religious vibe from this? Like, I get it. We're dealing with demons. But if, if it's not depraved and whatever, when you're a human or a god, then why is it when you're a demon? Like, you know, it's just weird. And then the whole obsession with babies is just freaking weird, and I just, you're killing the vibe, you know, you just, and then we have moments like this where everything's going along fine, you're like, okay, it's just a normal, goofy little route, we're left demons, and Clarice just took someone's soul to hell, and now it's her pet, and that's weird, but okay, you know, and like, but then we're gonna talk about depraved things, and like, whatever, and it's like, I just, but then she's totally like, oh, he's cute when he's embarrassed, and I'm gonna kiss him and tease him, but then it's depraved, and it's like, I just, I just don't understand, like, I, it's just, I don't know, like, you're bringing the vibe down, like, we have moments where everything's going along fine, and then you just have to yank it down and, like, ruin it with your weird, judgy language and baby obsession, and I just, overall, I'm gonna have to give this route a fail. Listen, 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 we had an ending where we fucked a man-beast. And we didn't talk about that being depraved, where we probably should have. Now we're kissing our husband and that's a depraved act. You know what I'm saying? Like, where the fuck did this come from? Like, why is it depraved? Why, why, why? Like, why are you dragging everything down? Like, and my personal problems with the baby thing aside, it's like, just the weird choice of language and the weird, like, seemingly religious -y undertones here with, like, you know, oh, sex is depraved and its only purpose is for babies. And like, what's the point otherwise? And then her having to convince herself. And it's like, what? Where is that coming from? It's not like this is in her character. You know what I mean? We played Pio Fiore and I don't think that our little church mouse spoke like that about some of the shit. As much as Spacey slash Lynette has in Alan's route. And it's bizarre. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So. Anyway, let's hope it stays on a high and doesn't drag itself down, but I'm sure it will. So I will see you next time unless I rage quit. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.